Today at Whirlwind Disc Brakes, we're going to show you how easy it can be to upgrade your Triumph brakes to our Forge Dynalite Front Big Brake Kit. Before we begin, it's very important to read through our datasheet instructions designed for your application to verify brake lines, wheel clearance, and look for any variations that may have taken place before or after the vehicle left the factory. With the car properly secured and the front wheels removed, we suggest taking some photos of the current setup for reference if needed. Here's the 1974 Triumph TR6 we are going to install the kit on. When ready to begin, disassemble the original equipment front brakes. Start by removing the jam nut that attaches the hard line to the soft line. Place a vacuum cap over the hard line to prevent brake fluid from leaking. Remove the two caliper bracket mounting bolts. Slide the caliper off the rotor and set aside. Next, remove the dust cap, cotter pin, and axle nut. Slide the hat and rudder assembly off the spindle. Bend back the locking tabs and remove the bolts that attach the caliper bracket to the spindle. Slide the OEM bracket off the spindle. Save the OEM spacers as they will be reused in the installation. Save the OEM grease seal as it will also be reused in the installation. Remove the dust shield. Degrease the mounting area of the spindle. Slide the OEM grease seal back onto the spindle. Orient the caliper mounting bracket and install using the bolts, washers, and nuts on the bracket mounting holes. Reuse the OEM spacers on the upper bolts. Ensure the bracket fits squarely, and if it does, use Loctite 271 on the two lower bolts and torque all four bolts to instruction specifications. We've already verified that the bracket fits squarely. Remove the OEM rotor from the OEM hub assembly. Clean and degrease the OEM hub assembly to ensure that the Wilwood hat and rotor assembly fits flush. Orient the rotor and the hat and attach the rotor to the hat using the supplied bolts. Apply red Loctite 271 to the threads and using an alternating sequence, torque bolts to instruction specifications. Orient the rotor hat assembly onto the OEM hub assembly and attach using the provided bolts and washers. Ensure the hat rotor assembly fits flush on the OEM hub assembly and if it does, use red Loctite 271 and torque the bolts to instruction specifications. Install the hat rotor hub assembly onto the spindle using the OEM components in the reverse order as disassembly. Snug down the spindle nut and check for interference between the bracket assembly bolts protruding through the clench nuts and the hat hub mounting bolts hex heads. Once fitment has been confirmed, adjust bearing per OEM specifications. Mount the caliper onto the caliper mounting bracket using the bolts and washers. Initially place two shims on each bolt between the caliper and the bracket. We've already test fit the caliper on this vehicle and only need one shim for correct alignment. Temporarily tighten the mounting bolts and view the rotor through the top opening of the caliper. The rotor should be centered in the caliper. If not, adjust by adding or subtracting shims between the bracket and the caliper. Always use the same amount of shims on each of the two mounting bolts. The end of the bolts must be flush or slightly protruding from the head of the clench nut. If necessary, place shims between the washer and the caliper mounting ear to achieve proper clench nut engagement. Once the caliper alignment and clench nut engagement are correct, remove the bolts and apply red Loctite 271 to the bolt threads and torque to instruction specifications. Install the disc brake pads into the caliper with the friction material facing the rotor. Secure pads in place using cotter pin. Next, using PTFE tape, Install the 90 degree fitting into the caliper. Screw the flex line into the 90 degree fitting on the caliper and tighten. Carefully route the hoses to prevent contact with moving suspension, brake, or wheel components. Install the flex line through the hole in the chassis, followed by the jam nut. Remove the vacuum cap and connect the hard line to the flex line. Double check all your work for safety reasons and when ready, perform a full system fill and bleed with new Willwood brake fluid best suited for your application. Be sure to check again for sufficient wheel clearance and follow the directions for proper bedding of pads and pedal feel. Contact a professional if you encounter any difficulties or have any doubts or any questions.